I believe it was 1987. We uh, moved across country from Las Vegas to Hogansville. And that alone was a pretty big deal. We were all kind of in culture shock just from the difference in scenery, landscape, you know, everything. People never have seen open land and trees like you see in Georgia. It was just, it was a big deal. And I remember I was in the seventh grade and we were going to school. School year had already begun. I just couldn't believe how big the girls were. They were all as big as me. I, and the fact that I couldn't understand what anybody said. It was a big transition, but made friends and still have a lot of those friends today, actually. But, uh, you know, growing up here in Hogansville, I, I basically say I'm from Hogansville. I really don't tell people I'm from Las Vegas. I say I'm from Hogansville because I feel like where we grew up, my brothers, my sister, this is kind of where it all happened. Transitioning from middle school, then on to Hogansville High School. I graduated from Hogansville High School in 1993. I was working with my parents at Pizza Stop. It wasn't something I aspired to do, but they needed my help and, you know, I, I helped. I helped on the weekends, Friday and Saturday. It's kind of come full circle. Never thought that I would be back in the pizza business. I really wasn't crazy about it. I saw how hard my mom and dad worked and they were just open like a few hours a day, five days a week. This other job that I had, all of my coworkers, they wanted to try the food. Well, th this was in Atlanta. So I decided I was going to bring some food to work. So everybody was excited about it. We planned it. It was a Saturday morning and I had, I don't know, six or seven pizzas and some other things, some wings. I was worried I was going to forget the food. So I left the food on the patio table on my porch. I'm going to walk right by it. I'm not going to forget it. And it was cold outside. I didn't have any room in the refrigerator, so I just did it like that. Looking back on it, probably wasn't the best idea. So I wake up, load the car up, drive to Atlanta, carry the food through screening down this long hallway, finally get into this break room. Everybody's so excited. They're there early. Get the pizzas laid out. A buddy of mine opens the box up, and I kid you not, 20 roaches ran out of the box of pizza. And literally, everybody in the room started screaming and running. It was the most embarrassing thing I've ever been through in my life. Well, I don't know about that, but it was close too. It's one of the top 10. Transitioning from pizza stop to this part-time job that I had, I ended up taking this part-time job and it turned into a full-time job. I actually was there for 25 years. From 1993 to 2017, I worked my way kind of up through the ranks, got into management, operations management, and I had to move to Mobile, Alabama. Ended up bouncing all over the place, moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, Charlotte, North Carolina, Fort Worth, Texas, and ended up in Memphis. I worked my way into the senior management ranks. So needless to say, I was making a really good living. I remember being 31 years old with a six-figure salary thinking I made it. And it was only going to get better from there as long as I continue to work hard and progress. Joey opened Carvella's Pizza in 2014, which I was really excited for. I knew that he was going to do good at it. He didn't know that he was going to do good at it. I felt like he was going to do great at it. I would come home and visit to take my family. We'd go eat at the restaurant. Joey and I would talk periodically, you know, usually two or three times a month and talk about what was going on with it. And I just knew that there was something special about the place. Having this long running history of pizza and the Carvel's family, it was really neat because when uh, my dad sold the business, I kind of thought it was over. I never thought it was going to come back. And then when Joey had that opportunity to buy it, it was like, wow, this is something to that you know it's just a phone number the phone number 637-6000 you know that's the original phone number from pizza stuff that phone number has been with this business since the beginning that's the phone number you call today to order pizza in Hogansville Georgia and you know one needs a Googleist from Hogansville they know the number the decision to leave FedEx ultimately it was unjustifiable financially it made absolutely no sense we had a lot of stability, still a huge future ahead. Carvelis Pizza couldn't even pay me, literally. There was, there was no paycheck. I didn't want to bankrupt the business. I mean, you know, so we just decided, hey, I'm going to come on and I'm not going to make any money for as long as we need to. We didn't have a plan. <laughs> we just knew at some point in time we would be all right. And that's where the faith came in. This building was purchased before I came on. This was what was going to take the business to a level that actually would justify me being part of it. It took one year. When that one year started, guess what my salary was? $400 a week, baby. I was bringing it in. It paid for my gas. Let me just say this. I started getting serious about actually leaving FedEx. I didn't tell anybody, especially people at FedEx because they would have obviously said, have you lost your mind? Which ultimately, I believe, <laughs> that's what everybody said anyway. The only person that didn't think that I had lost my mind was Joey and Emily. 
my wife April. I mean, we were the four people that were in on it. I'm passionate about this business, the direction it's going in, and our, our vision for the business. Everybody in life can talk themselves out of anything, especially if there's risk involved. Worst case scenario, I'd have found another job. I didn't even think about that. I just went forward with it, I did it, and you know, very thankful that we made that decision. I do believe that was the turning point in Carvel's Pizza. Growing up here in Hogansville, I have four brothers and a sister, and we're all still very close. So the vision is one day for all of us to work together. I still think it's gonna happen at some point in time. We're coming for you, you better be ready. But not just family members too, I mean, we have an army of unbelievably talented employees that we have been able to build this business with. I'm okay if I don't ever have to stretch a pizza. Joey's very passionate about the food. I'm very passionate about them making the food right. <laughs> so, Joey and I, we work well together because his talents are so focused on the way our kitchen runs, the way the food's produced, the way the food's created. I mean, obviously he created those pizzas and, and all these sauces. I can take those skill sets with you know, building a team, get people put in the right place, and scaling the business in multiple cities and still understanding how to manage it. What Joey was able to do was figure out how to feed more people. Our entire management staff, and our entire kitchen staff and front of house staff, everybody's skill sets are, I feel like, in the right place. They're all getting better. That only happens with committed people. People with great attitudes, good work ethic, and just and understanding the mission. And that's what we've got here at Carvelo's Pizza. And we're excited about bringing it to more people and taking it to more cities. I think this thing will be going long after I'm gone, just like uh, it's going long after my dad's gone. You know, I think about him a lot, knowing he's, he's looking down on this and he's gotta be having a huge smile on his face. Every day I see my mom, she just drives by. She just likes to come by and see it. It's just, it's the coolest thing ever. And they know that it started with them. I'm happy to be back here in Hogansville. It's a great place to raise your family and quality of life. Excited to be here for the future of the business.